G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again with another WPF tutorial. We're doing the second part of our calculator, which we're actually going to end on. I'm sorry guys, I'm not going to do a part three for this one. But this video, we're going to add all the code to our number buttons, our operation buttons, clear buttons, and then our positive and negative button in that order. Okay, the way I'm going to add the events to the buttons is just by simply double clicking on the button while it's not selected. If you actually have the button selected and then you double click, it simply changes the content to the button. If you have it not selected and then double click on it, it jumps into here and creates that event for you. Now, what do we need to do? First of all, we have to add a couple of variables at the very top of our main window for us to be able to store some data. So I'm going to do that right here. Okay, I'm going to put some empty lines around it. Two numbers we're going to start with. Okay, the first one is number one, funnily enough. Second one is number two. And finally, we're going to have a string for the operation that the user selects. So you're adding, minusing, timesing, dividing, things like that. Now, you may be asking, why the hell am I using longs as opposed to ints or even floats for that matter, okay? I'm not using ints because they don't store very large values, okay? Ints only use 32 bits. That means they crash at, oh, what's the value? Let's have a look. Okay, assigned int, if I go down to programmer, can you not do that please? Or not, you can just stay there, hey? It sounds fine. Uh, let's go scientific. Let's go two to the power of 31, okay, minus one. So we can only store up to 2.1 million. Whereas with a long, okay, I can actually use 64 bits of memory. So that means two to the power of 63 minus one. That means we can store all the way up to this number here. Okay, the reason I'm not using a float is because we're not dealing with fractional numbers at all. If you feel like using floats, go right ahead but I'm not, okay? I'm just gonna stick with good old integers. But for this one, when we click on the button one, what do we want to happen? We wanna add the number one onto our display. Now, here's the thing. I actually wanna add it onto this number here, and then I wanna put that number into the display, okay? That really is the way we're gonna do it. Now, what happens if we already have the number, say, 78 in the display? So number one already has the value 78. What I really want to do when I press the number one is increase that number to seven, eight, one. Okay, so what I'm doing there is I'm shuffling the numbers to the left, adding a zero, and then putting my num new number on the end. Okay, so if it said, let's say 78, when I press the one, I want it to say seven, eight, one. So what's actually going on here? What I'm doing is, is I'm timesing this number by 10. So it looks like seven, eight, zero. And then I add on my number one. So that's the operation I need to perform on number one. I actually have to times the value by 10, add the new digit, and then I have to put number one up in the display. Okay, it seems like a really roundabout way of doing things, but it actually creates a nice smooth experience in the very end. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to start with number one. I know that there's an opportunity we might be working with number two. Let's keep it simple. Okay, so we're going to make it equal number one times 10. Okay, so we're increasing it by that 10 value, and then we're adding on one. So number one equals its value times by 10, add on the digit that they've clicked on. Okay, simple as that. We've added the one on top of it, and then to put that number in the display, we go txt display.text equals number, and don't forget dot to string. Brackets on the end, semicolon on the end. Save it, press play, Let's have a look at how it behaves because it should theoretically when I mash on the number one, actually add it to the display for me. Simple as that, okay? So these are two operations that I'm gonna be doing a whole lot of throughout the entire program. And I could right now copy and paste this into the other eight buttons, but we then have to add more code for this bad boy here, okay? And we have to add more code for if it's number two. Okay, so how do we know if they've pressed their number one and they've pressed the operation and then they've moved on, okay? What's gonna happen is operation starts as an empty string. So if they've only just starting to type their first number, then oper excuse me, operation should be an empty string. Okay, if it's not an empty string, that means they've typed their first operation, or sorry, typed their first number, pressed the operation, and they're typing in their second number at that point. So what I'm going to do is add a quick if statement on every single one of these buttons before I do any copy and pasting. So I'm going to go if operation 
equals empty string, then do these two lines, like so. Else, okay, I just pasted that. We're not gonna do these two lines. We're gonna swap every single number that we see inside this code block to number two, okay? And this is actually what we're going to do here, okay? So if the operation is nothing, okay, then it means we're just working with number one. Otherwise, we're working with number two. So I'm gonna copy and paste all of this code into the other nine buttons. I think I said eight before, anyway. And I'm gonna swap this digit to the correct one for that button, okay? So I'm gonna stop the video, do all that, and I'll come back. Okay, and we're back. Now you can see I've attacked every single one of these buttons increasingly, all the way up to zero, because that makes no sense. But you can see with the zero button, I actually dropped the plus zero because it doesn't make any difference. I could have left it as plus zero if I wanted to, but adding zero means nothing, so you can just leave that off if you feel like it. Okay, so my next promise was to get the operation buttons working. So what we're gonna do is a very simple process here. Let's click on our designer. I want you to double click on the add button. And the way this is gonna work is we're going to change the, um, the value of operation, okay, to be a plus, and then we're going to change the display so it's a zero again, because when we go 56 plus, you wanna see it instantly react to that plus button. So operation equals plus, just like that in quotes, and then I wanna go txt display dot text equals zero, simple as that. So that way the behavior now is when I type in the number, like I said, 56 plus, it's ready for me to type in the second number, which it actually is now storing inside number two because of the way we set up our if statements. So I'm gonna quickly copy and paste this code. I'm just gonna change the operation in each button. I won't stop the video because this won't take me long. Okay, so just simply change that to a negative. Change that to a multiplication. Make a division. Come on, matey, whoops. Always make that mistake, like so. And then we have to attack the equals button, which is not too bad, okay? So with that done, let's go back here. Let's double click on the equals. This is probably the part everybody wants to work on. And I'm gonna add a switch case here. I don't like if statements for them, okay? You could use an if statement if you prefer, but I'm going to use switch for this one, all right? Now, the first case is they press the plus button, okay? What are we gonna do when they press the plus button? Well, text display dot text is going to equal number one, whoop, plus number two, like so. The only problem is I've got this error saying I can't convert a number into a string. So I need my dot to string. And the way we do that is you put brackets around your addition, put dot to string afterwards like that. And because I'm using a switch case, I need to put a break on the end of this to stop my addition case. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. You're adding the two numbers together, converting that resulting number into a string and putting it inside the text display. So I'm gonna copy and paste that three more times, each time changing my symbol, changing it here as well, otherwise everything is going to go to hell. Okay, you might prefer to swap around the number one and number two, or actually no, what am I talking about? That's something else entirely, but anyway. That's the equals button 100% done. Okay, we don't have to do anything more there. So if we press start, I should be able to perform as many operations as I feel like. And there you go. All right, I'm gonna leave that as is. I'm just gonna close that. We have to attack the clear buttons now, okay? I said I'd do that next. So I'm gonna start with CE, okay? He means clear entry, okay? And that means only clear the number that I have been working on, not all of the numbers, okay? So what I need to do in CE is check if they're working on the first number or the second number. And again, that's just your if operation equals empty, then they're working on number one. So number one equals nothing. Sorry about that noise, guys. My front doorbell just rang and it scared the absolute poo out of me. Anyway, you can see what we're going for next. When we clear the entry, we simply need to update the display to equal our new number. Now, you could just write zero like that if you wanted to, or you could make it number to string. 
whatever, it actually doesn't make a difference. Let's do our else for number two equals zero and then the text display, well actually, now I think of it because they're both zero, I could move that under the if statement. Okay, this is not what I have in my original program, so that's why I'm sort of talking about it as if it's a mystery to me. The update, the set number that we want to clear to zero and then either way, the display is going to say zero. It doesn't matter which one we're working with. All right, now we have to work on doing the clear. Okay, so getting rid of all of it. So it doesn't matter how many numbers we've typed in or what operation we've picked, we clear the whole thing. So let's quickly jump to that button. That's this guy. And his, this one's pretty easy. You simply go number one equals zero. Number two equals zero. Operation equals nothing. And then you set the text display to the number zero. Okay, that's clear, 100% done. The last one we have to do is the plus and the minus. Okay, so let's jump on. I'm going to double, oh sorry, I forgot this one, the backspace key. All right, he might seem a little bit difficult, but he's actually pretty easy. The idea is he's basically the opposite of clicking on a number button. So instead of adding a digit to it, we're simply removing a digit from it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll up, find one of my number buttons, and I'm going to copy and paste it here. And then we're just going to modify the code slightly. So I'm going to scroll up. I'm going to steal it from button zero because that makes the most sense. Copy, come down here, paste. Okay, now how do we remove a digit? Well, instead of timesing, you simply divide by 10, like so. Okay, and that will remove the last digit off the number you were using. Okay, then we only have one more button to go, thankfully, and that is the positive and the negative button. Okay, if you know anything about maths, this guy is pretty straightforward. You're simply going to be timesing it by a negative one. So I'm going to paste my code here, like so that I had from my number zero button. I actually want to change this a little bit. I'm just going to put times equals minus one. And that simply means times the number one by negative one. And that will simply swap it between positive and negative. Okay. And guess what? That is our calculator 100% finished. We've coded every single button and it's good to go. So quick apology guys for taking so long to get this out. I did have other videos I needed to get out first because of the school semester starting up very, very soon. But I'd like to thank you for holding on there. And if you want to think about liking, subscribing and commenting, you know where to find it. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next video, everybody. Thanks again.